straight up. No more excitement here. Good evening, Mr. Wayne. What happened, Davis? We just had a killing here. Who was it? Don't know. Some fellow just entered the building when he was shot. He must have been going up to see the governor. Is the governor still in his office? Yes, sir. His secretary just told me he's expecting you. Thanks. Good evening, Mr. Wayne. How are you, Wells? Yes? Mr. Wayne is here, sir. Send him right in. Go right in. The governor's considerably upset. Hello, Governor. Hello, Bob. You heard about the killing? Yes. The dead man was Arthur Chambers, the greatest criminologist in the country. Only he and I were supposed to know that he was to meet me here tonight. Well, someone else had to know or he wouldn't have been shot. Dr. Satan knew. Dr. Satan? Yes. Dr. Satan had him killed. Then some of the rumors about this mysterious Dr. Satan are true. All of them are probably true. Dr. Satan's spies have penetrated even the police department. The situation is so serious that I'm going to call four companies of the National Guard. Well, if this Dr. Satan is so powerful, won't he strike at you when he hears about that order? Yes. Yes, I suppose he will. As a matter of fact, I've already been threatened. That's why I sent for you. Bob, for the first time in my life, I'm really worried. Not only for myself, but because I may be killed before I can accomplish certain things that are desperately in need of accomplishment. I sent for you because there is something I want you to hear from me rather than read in a will after I'm dead. Don't talk like that, sir. Sit down, my boy. I can give you the information I want you to have best if I reminisce a little. As you know, I'm not a native of this state. I was born and raised on a cattle ranch in Arizona. The best friend I ever had was a young puncher who came out of Texas to ride for my father. For the moment, we'll call him Smith. Smith and I were inseparable until the word spread that he was riding with a wild bunch. He quit the ranch and soon after, a series of raids began by an unknown masked rider called the Copperhead. Copperhead? I've heard of him somewhere. Was he your friend Smith? Yes. He was called the Copperhead because he always wore this copper mask. Whenever he made a raid, or had to kill a man, one of these copper serpents were always found at the scene. But what is all this to do with me, sir? The copperhead was your father. My father? Yes, Bob. Your father died a few months after you were born, and your mother died the next winter. I started then to look after your affairs, and you've been with me ever since. I realize I never knew much about my parents. Somehow, I've always regarded you as my father. It's a little tough to learn now that my real dad was a criminal. Now, wait a minute, my boy. I told you your dad righted some wrongs badly in need of writing. That's the plain, simple truth. Don't ever forget it. Thank you, sir. I never will. Do you mind if I leave now, sir? Of course not. See me in the morning. Don't ever feel anything but pride in your father, Bob. He was the most courageous man I have ever known. Why, if the Copperhead were alive today, he'd run this Dr. Satan to earth before he could strike another blow. Thanks. Good night, sir. Good night, my boy. If the Copperhead were alive today, he'd run this Dr. Satan to earth before he could strike another blow. of the National Guard. You are instructed to accomplish this transfer immediately. It is also my desire... Who are you and what are you doing here? I am 
appointment was for midnight, Your Excellency. Wells. Wells, who is this man who just came in? Tell the police why you killed the governor and I'll drop you in the street. No, no, I'll tell, I'll tell all I know. Now talk. You heard me talk. I didn't want to do it. Dr. Satan made me. If I refused to kill the governor, Dr. Satan would kill me. Wayne, this fellow killed the governor, all right. But now we've got to find out who this Dr. Satan is. Hiya, Chief. Reporters. Bob Wayne, how are you? I'm all right, Speed. It's good to see you again. This is Lois Scott, our top sob sister. Glad to know you, Mr. Wayne. Thanks. I'm glad to know you, too, Miss Scott. Is that the killer? I'm going to question him now. You can stay and listen, but I'll tell you how much you can use. That's okay with us, Chief. Get a shot of him, Speed. Who is this Dr. Satan? I don't know. None of us know. But he killed the governor, and he killed all of us. If you don't know who he is, how do you get your orders? Through this. My control disc. Dr. Satan talks to me through this. Dr. Satan, the police have captured Corbett. Captured Corbett? Yes, sir. They're questioning him now. What is your next job for Dr. Satan? Thomas Scott, the inventor. Why, that's my father. What does Dr. Satan want Scott for? Scott has an invention Dr. Satan wants. An invention Dr. Satan will soon possess. You could not protect Governor Bronson. You cannot protect Scott any more than you can protect Corbet. Who knows the penalty for treason to me is death. Corbet told too much. They'll warn Scott. Of course. But I'll get those plans away from him tonight. I must get him. Scott's remote control cell is all I need. Once I equip a robot with that device, there is no limit to the power and wealth I can command. But Dr. Satan, the police... Police will be fast, but I'll be faster. Scott is returning to Capital City tonight from Washington with the plans. I'll take Corwin and Gort, and we'll catch the train at Maple Junction. Now, now, young lady, nobody's going to kill your father. 
We'll call Miles City and have them put a detective on the train to guard him. You come into the teletype room with me. Chief, I feel I have a personal interest in this Dr. Satan. Can you deputize me and let me help hunt him down? Oh, I sure, Bob. Glad to have you. This way, please. Speed, have you still got that racing job? Have I? I've got a better and faster one. You ought to see it. All right, it. we're going to need it as soon as I can find out the number of Scott's compartment. Come on. All I know is Chief Land sent out a request for one of us to catch this train and ride in with you. We'll probably know more about it when we get there. I hope so. Let's go. Thanks. Don't mind if I do. Might as well get comfortable for the rest of the night. Any time now, Doctor. They're settling down for the night. Good. Cut back to Capital City on the Valley Highway. We'll catch her in that straight stretch. Okay. Master. some important information for you. May I come in? Just a moment. Come in. I'm Bob Wayne, Mr. Scott. I'm glad to see that the Miles City detective caught the train. I must ask you to explain your business briefly, young man. It's late and I'm tired. Mr. Scott, Dr. Satan may try to attack you on this train tonight. If he does, I want to be here. Mm. Well, then, perhaps I can accommodate you. I am Dr. Satan. This pneumatic pistol is practically noiseless and fires a small hypodermic needle which contains a strong poison. You will be dead before we leave this room.
Thanks. reported. A man in a copper mask jumped him and knocked him out. When he came to, the briefcase was gone and that copper snake was in his hand. A copper hand. I'll have the plans to Scott's remote control cell before morning. He's having a trial run under Turner Yacht tonight. We got Bolton planted in Turner's shipyard. I want to talk to him. Then I'll go to Scott's place in Loman Park. Good morning, Alice. Good morning, Mr. Scott. Oh, Alice, uh, this is Mr. Wayne. Bob, this is my secretary, Miss Brent. How do you do, Miss Brent? How do you do, Mr. Wayne? Why? That's my briefcase. The messenger boy just arrived with it. The plans. Why, they're all here. It seems to be for you, Mr. Scott. Dear sir, herewith are the plans to your remote control cell. Copperhead. I wish I knew him. I certainly owe him a great debt of gratitude. Perhaps you will know him someday, Mr. Scott. Well, I'll put these safely away. Mr. Scott, are you sure that this safe is protection enough against Dr. Satan? Yes, ample protection. That switch operates an invention of my own. A controlled electric current sufficient to knock a man unconscious. Oh, I see. I'm naturally interested in your control cell, Mr. Scott. Mind if I come back tonight and watch you conduct the experiment? Uh, certainly not. We're glad to have you. Well, then I won't delay any longer. See you tonight. Uh, Lois and I are going out to the shipyard. We'll walk out with you. Come along, Lois. What do you want here? What has happened to my control panel? I will answer those questions. I'm Dr. Satan, and I have your control panel. Dr. Satan? What do you want with me? I want a complete set of plans for your remote control cell. If you care to be reasonable in the matter, you'll be handsomely rewarded. I refuse to give them to you at any price. You're testing the dimension tonight on Turner's yacht. Your daughter is aboard that yacht. My men have wired explosives into the fuel tanks. The fuse is connected with the speed indicator. When the boat attains a speed of 25 knots, those charges will be fired. I don't believe it. I still refuse to give you the plans. I anticipated you might be stubborn. Perhaps a little time will change your mind. Particularly when you realize that each minute will bring your daughter a minute closer to death. Sit down.
can readily see, Mr. Scott, you are absolutely at my mercy. Any sensible person who loved his daughter would surrender the plans. I'll surrender the plans. What happened? The men tied me up in the barn. Are they still there? I think so. Good leads. Drop that gun, Dr. Satan. Copperhead. I'll take those plans. <coughs> Mr. Scott, call the police and tell them we'll bring Dr. Satan in. He won't if he wants his daughter to live. He's right. I don't dare. The yacht has been mined to explode at a certain speed. He has the control panel. Unless he gives orders to stop it, Lois will be killed. You're a prisoner now, Dr. Satan. If Miss Scott is killed, you'll stand trial for murder. Perhaps you'd better change your plan. And if I agree to have the yacht return safely to shore, what are your terms? I'll hold you here until we've heard from Miss Scott. Then I'll give you 15 minutes start. Very well. I'll give you the order. several hours to revive you from that shock. Without him to stop the test, Lois will be killed. What time does the test start? 10 o'clock. Dr. Satan said I had until 10.30 before the ship will be blown up. Contact the yacht on the shortwave radio. We're now officially on the test, Captain Lathrop. It's 10 o'clock, and I have personally checked to see the government seals on all hatches and engine room companionways are intact. And from now on, we'll be guided by Mr. Scott on shore through his remote control cell, right? That's right. He's already taken over your steering apparatus. <laughs> well, if I wasn't watching this, I wouldn't believe it. No wonder Dr. Satan wants control of this invention. It's no use. The radio is out. Dr. Satan would see to that. What's the yacht's location? About 10 miles east of Middlebank Lightship. I may be able to get there and warn them before the yacht blows up. You stay here till the police arrive. The test is certainly working this far. It's amazing. Amazing. I'll go to the radio room and call Father. That's already. B4X2 calling W6XO. We're gaining speed rapidly, much more than Mr. Scott indicated we would. B4X2 calling W6XO. Scott should know better than this. We're not built for this speed. Contacted your father yet? Not yet, Captain. This radio seems to be out. Keep trying. Mr. Martin, will you please check our aerial? Yes, sir. Something must be wrong. Send some men out to Scotts and see what happens. We have five minutes yet. 
If you don't hear from Dr. Satan by 10.30, what will you do? Just what I was told to do. Blow up the yacht. B4X2 calling W6XO. get fire axes and break open the engine room companionways. I'll stop this ship if I have to cripple it. Put the copper in. This boat's mine. Fine. Fine. It'll blow up any minute. I've got a speedboat astern. Get into it. Where's Miss Scott? B4X2 calling W6XO. Scarlet and Gord rescued you before the police arrived. What about the yacht? It was blown up and sunk. Scott's remote control device sunk with it. However, you obeyed my orders. Has Scott got another? Probably. If not, he will surely build one. And I must have it. With remote control robots, I can be master of the nation's wealth. You must keep close watch on Scott and his associates. Learn when they plan to attempt another demonstration. Because Colonel Bevins must return to Washington tomorrow night, I'll hold a demonstration in the morning. This time I'll use a plane. I've arranged for one at Fairview Airport. But Dr. Satan has your control board. I have set up a control system on a different frequency. The board he has will be useless. Aren't you afraid Dr. Satan will try to sabotage this test, too? He may, but we'll be ready for him. The control tube would not be installed in the plane until just before the takeoff. I'd like to go in that plane if there's room for me. Sorry, Bob. No one is going in that plane. Seems to me that someone should be in that plane all the time. I think our present precautions are adequate. The airport assures me the plane will be well guarded. All set? Good, I'll phone Mr. Scott. Hello, Mr. Scott. Yes, the control tube's installed okay. You can take her off any time. Right. Goodbye. Everything is ready, Colonel. The motor speed was built up to normal before anything could be seen on the scanning screen.
plane just took off. No one in it. All right. Start the controls. What's wrong? Hmm. It just doesn't work. So I see. Scott must have changed the wavelength. There's only one thing to do. I left to get a man aboard that plane. And take a radio-equipped car and keep in touch with the plane. And when it lands, get Scott remote control cell. Yes, sir. I'm now guided to the bombing range. Two light bombs first. Marvelous. This device will make every other method of warfare obsolete. I now attempt a dive bombing attack. get that control cell into a safe place as soon as possible. It would be a catastrophe if it ever got into the wrong hands. Another attempt at sabotage. Hold it. Man. I don't know where he is. I'll find out. Get that control tube out of the motor. All right, tie him up. We'll take him to Dr. Satan. Keep him here till Dr. Satan comes. I'll be upstairs. I'll keep him. Sit down.
splendid stone, splendid. I'll be over there soon. cabin when we got it. Where is he now? In the cellar. Bring him to me. Yes, sir. and slug me. I will disclose this location to the police. And I'll be forced to abandon a valuable laboratory all because of your callousness. I do not tolerate callousness. And you know the penalty. It, it wasn't my fault. I... Give me another chance. Give me another chance and I'll...
Where'd he go? I don't know. You'll never find him now. Get to the warehouse. Stay here with the cars. The new office is on the 12th floor, Doctor. Everything quiet? Yeah, nobody's been around. Good. Don't let anyone in. Okay. to set up a new laboratory here? Possibly. Although there is little I can accomplish until I learn the secret of Scott's remote control system. With that device to operate my robots and machines, the wealth and power of the nation will be mine for the taking. That control tube contained the vital element of the whole system. Was hopelessly smashed when the cup I had dropped it. Yes, and the only other one in existence was sunk with the turning yacht. Sunk? Yes. But perhaps not destroyed. We'll get diving equipment, locate the wreck, and recover that tube. Find him. 
We found the flame, but the control tube had been removed. I'm afraid that means Dr. Satan's got it. Why, what's this? It's from the copperhead. The tube in the plane was destroyed, but Dr. Satan plans to salvage the one on the yacht, the copperhead. Why, this is amazing. Copperhead's always been right before. We'll have to salvage that tube before Dr. Satan gets it. It will not be easy to find in the wreckage. I think it would be simpler to destroy it with a depth charge. We'll need diving equipment to find the wreck. We could use a diving chamber for that. The one Professor Lewis built for his scientific expedition is at the harbor now. I'll make arrangements at once. Scarlett said Scott went to the diving chamber and took it out this morning. Get your men into a speedboat. Go out and take over the ship and use your equipment. Hurry, they're probably there already. Yes, sir. When you're ready, we'll send down the explosives. Try and get them as near a midship as possible. Right. Almost down. Almost down. They're almost down. Easy. They're all on the other side. Drop the motor. Careful not to tangle those detonating wires. Yes, sir. Tell them to swing it forward 10 feet, not as far as they can. Speed? Yes, sir. All right, stand by. We'll bring them on board. Stand still, everybody. We're taking this ship over. Now, get in that cabin. Everybody, come on. Hello, Alice. Something's happened. There's a lot of noise on deck. Hello. Hello. Side, 
ready to come up now. Is the detonator all connected speed? Yes, sir. All right, stand by. We'll bring them on board. Stand still, everybody. We're taking this ship over. Now, get in that cabin. Everybody, come on. I wonder why they don't take us up. Call them again. Hello, Alice. There's a lot of noise on deck. Outside fast. Don't move, or I'll let him have it. We're getting out of here. Don't start anything. Pick up court. We're taking your friend with us, so don't use that gun. What could have happened? I'm afraid Dr. Satan's going to have attacked the boat. Chamber. We're moving. Do you think they're all right? I don't know. That was a terrific explosion. There it is. It's been damaged, but they may be all right. That's enough. Explosion wrecked the control tube in the yacht? I'm sure it did. The yacht must have been blown to bits. And that was the only tube left? Yes. Only Scott knows how to make another. My mechanical men are perfect, with one exception. A remote control device which will permit me to direct him from a distance. Scott has perfected such a device. And I must have it. Too bad we didn't capture Scott instead of his young friend. Hmm. Perhaps the young man will serve our purpose just as well. Bring him in.
Remember Dr. Satan's orders. Speed. Now, what's the matter? Are you ill? Martin is all right, Mr. Scott. Everyone stay just where you are. This is Dr. Satan speaking. Mr. Martin has been given a drug which puts him completely under my control. I've sent him to request a favor of you. Why? Why, this is preposterous. Do you expect to frighten me with a drug man and a portable radio? There's more than that, Mr. Scott. Martin also carries a very deadly bomb which I can set off at any moment. Stay in front of him at all times, so I can watch your every move. Unless you wish to cause the death of everyone in the room, you must obey me implicitly. What's the matter, Mr. Scott? Don't you hear me? Yes, I hear you. What do you want me to do? You are to come with Martin to my headquarters and give me instructions for making your remote control device. Well, what is your decision? I... I suppose I must do what you tell me. But I must get my formula and notes from the safe. Very well, but hurry. There's nothing I can do here, but if the electric power were cut off, Dr. Satan's control board would go out and he couldn't set up his bomb. Why, that's impossible. Think of the consequences. People trapped in elevators, traffic stalled, lights out in operating rooms. It would be a catastrophe to the whole city. It'll be a catastrophe to the whole nation if Dr. Satan succeeds with his plans. We've got to stop him. I guess you're right, Bob. I'll arrange with the power company at once. Stay by the phone. I'll call you back. You are too slow, Mr. Scott. I missed the combination. I'll have to start over again. Yes? They'll do it. They'll cut the power off, but only for 30 seconds, starting at exactly 10 minutes after 3. Now remember, it's only for 30 seconds. Thanks. That's long enough. What are you doing now? I'm looking for the papers I need. Never mind that. Bring them all and start at once. Walk just ahead of Martin, Mr. Scott. Not too far ahead. Not too fast. Faster, Mr. Scott, faster. Scott, if you value your life. Look out, speed! Bob, aren't you taking off a chance? No, I had the electric power turned off for 30 seconds. Hurry, boy, hurry. Come on. Speed. Speed. Hold it. Don't try it. All right, get his gun.
Never mind him. Scott's the only one we want. Take him along. They took my truck and headed up the road. We've called the police, but... I demand to be released. Keep still if you know what's good for you. Sit down. Yes? 
This is Stoner. We have Scott at the Waterfront Laboratory. Splendid, Stoner. Splendid. I'll be over there soon. Yes, sir. Gordon, I've got to get rid of that gasoline truck. We can't leave it standing outside. Keep a close watch on him. Smoke? No, thanks. Would you like to make a lot of money? I get it. You want me to help you get away? Yes. I'll pay you well. What good would money do me? I can't get away from Dr. Satan. But with money, you could get away. Go anywhere. Not while I wear this control disc. Dr. Satan can take my life at any minute. Can't you take it off? No. If any of us try to remove our discs, we'd be electrocuted through them. I see. It's fiendish. But there must be a way to transfer the action of the ray. I can use this as a neutralizer. If you want to get this thing off me, I'll do anything I can to help you. It's a bargain. I'm sure there'll be no difficulty. Take off your coat. Stand on this rubber mat. It'll act as insulation. I know you're a great scientist. him to get us by the guards. Cover up. You can go now, Scarlett. I want to talk privately with Mr. Scott. I'm going, but I'm taking him with me, Dr. Satan. What does this mean? It means that you can't dictate to me anymore. I see. Our scientific friend has liberated you. You're very clever, Mr. Scott. You're coming along with us, Dr. Satan. Get away from that desk and put up your hands. You'll never get me past the guards. That's what you think. We're going out the back way. Take him out. As one scientist to another, don't you admire my robot? It's horrible. You like it better after you've worked on it. I work on it? That's why you're here. 
At present, I can only control this robot over a short distance. But with your remote control cell built in, I can send this robot and hundreds like it all over the country. With my army of mechanical men, I can seize wealth and power beyond limit. And you expect me to put my invention to such a use? I don't expect. I command. Will you start work at once, or shall I turn on the robot again? All right. I'll do it. Look over the material we have. If there is anything else you need, my men will get it for you. What do you suppose Dr. Satan intends to do with Father? He'll probably try to make him build another remote control cell. That'll take time and should give us a chance to locate him. The radio! Dad has his own private wavelength. If he ever gets a chance, he'll call this station. Good. We'll leave it tuned in and keep someone listening here all the time. Any shortwave messages? Not yet. There's some sort of a whistling noise coming over. You hear that? It's Father's favorite tune, the Blue Bells of Scotland. That must mean something. Need any help with that? No, thanks. I can't go on with this work without an RX transformer. An RX transformer? Yes, it's a transformer sold only by the Sterling Electric Company at 1103 Cellar Street. It's Father's voice. Okay, we'll get you one. Where'd you say this place is? 1103 Cellar Street. Call when you come with me. Palmer, you stay here. We'll be right back. 1103 Cellar Street. You stay here, Lois. I'll contact you later. Pardon me. Yeah? Have two men been here to buy an RX transformer? Why, yes. They just left. Why, there they go around the corner now. Thanks. I needed a transformer. I sent them for it. Go in the hall and watch. Send them in as soon as they return. Hold it. 
tie him up. My guards. Sit down, Mr. Scott. Put your hands behind you. I haven't heard an alarm from my guards. He's coming toward this room. Satan, you got your own man. Drop that gun. Get over there. Turn around. As soon as I release Mr. Scott, I'm going to turn you over to the police. Prisoner, Mr. Scott. Follow the robot. Because of your interference, the Copperhead escaped. I shall deal with you and the Copperhead at a proper time. At present, I require the secret of your remote control cell to use in my mechanical men. That guarantees your immediate safety. You'll never gain that secret from me. I know of your insane desire to seize power with an army of mechanical monsters. And I'll die before I contribute to that. One way of dealing with stubbornness, I have here a drug 
which will cause you no bodily harm, but will paralyze your willpower and make you obedient to my wishes. Hold them. They should work within 15 minutes. Lois, it's for you. This is Lois Scott. Who? Oh, it's the Copperhead. Your father's still alive, Miss Scott. You're sure? Isn't there something we can do? No, not at the present time. However, if you learn of anything or need my help in any way, call Exeter 377. Exeter 3... Seven, seven. Are you ready to build one of your remote control cells for me? Yes, sir. What is the secret of this cell? How does it get its remote control quality? Through a filament of tongueite. Tongueite? Where do you get it? It's a rare mineral. But I have an ample supply at my home, in charge of my secretary. Send three men to Scott's home tonight. I understand, sir. Bring me to Tangite at the Oxford Street office. I'll start the men for Lawman Park right away. You know what Lois wanted to see me about? It's probably to tell you about the message from the Copperhead. She'll be back in a few minutes. Take it easy, both of you. Pull that phone. We came for the tongue I'd Scott has been using this work. But I don't know where... What you're stalling. We know the stuff is in the vault. We have the combination. Where's the vault? You might as well tell him, Alice. It's in the cellar. Take them both in the cellar and get that tongue out. I'll stay up here and see that no one bothers you.
you doing here? Take her along. We gotta get out of here right now. Get moving. Yes, sir. I'm sorry you had to blunder into this, Miss Scott, but we will have to keep you here now. If you behave, you'll not be harmed. Oh, Dr. Satan, you're not going to leave her in there alone. The telephone. Never mind, I know what I'm doing. with me. This is Dr. Satan speaking. If you will come to the address I give you, I will explain how you can save Miss Scott's life. You must come alone and notify no one of your mission. I must have your word. You have the carpet's word. Good. The address is 200 Oxford Street. You must be here precisely at midnight. The copperhead will be there at the appointed time. Put your hands up. Now move along. We caught this man breaking into the house. Mr. Wayne, how did you find this house? Well, your men raided Loman Park tonight. Yes, yes, I... yes, I know. I got loose, saw them take Miss Scott away and followed them here. I see. I'll arrange to have you receive a permanent cure for snooping. But I was only trying to help Miss Scott. That is a task for the Copperhead. We're expecting him at any minute. The Copperhead? Yes. He's coming to save Miss Scott from, uh, shall we say, the discomfort of inhaling a very poisonous gas. Let me show you. Unless the Copperhead arrives here promptly under stroke of 12, that basket will release its gas pellets into the pan of acid. The resulting vapor will kill within two minutes. If the copperhead does keep his appointment, that door will be so wired that it will short circuit the timing device for the gas pellets. But it will electrocute the copperhead as he steps through the outer door. Take Mr. Wayne to the car and hold him there until we join you.
and no sign of the copperhead. Maybe he notified the police. I doubt it. But the girl's safety is stake. But we can't wait any longer. Come. cell properly installed in the robot? Yes, sir. You can send it anywhere and make it do anything you wish. Good. Continue working, Mr. Scott. I will need many more of those control cells. I've used up all the tungite. I can't build any more cells without it. Where have you been getting this tungite? The Acme Company controls it. It's guarded like radium. They sell it only to well-known scientists. We'll attend to that later. First, I want to put my robot to a test, a profitable test. You know where Ferndale is? Yes, sir. There is a prosperous bank. It's 11 o'clock, sir. Now for the great experiment.
So far, so good. Sixteen, calling car one six. Go to the Ferndale Bank. Burglar alarm ringing. Get going. before the police could question him. The whole thing's incredible. Sounds like a small town reporter's pipe dream. Maybe it isn't a pipe dream. It's very probable that Dr. Satan has forced Mr. Scott to put one of his remote control cells in the robot. Then you think Dr. Satan's behind the bank robbery? That's my theory. I'm going to Ferndale to see if this trail won't lead to Dr. Satan and your father. Speed, can you stand by here in case I have to get in touch with you? You bet, Bob. See you later. Take it easy now. Might have glass in it. All right, Jim, thank you. Goodbye. We haven't much to go on, Mr. Wayne. We found some papers on the man who was shot. Now, this one's the plan of the bank. This other's Mark Warehouse. We have no idea what warehouse it is. I can't figure out what those letters TX mean. And that's all you got? Yes, but we'll keep working. Good luck, Lieutenant. Is there a phone around here I can use? Yes, use that one. Father uses it. 
from the Metropolitan Drug Company. Their warehouse is on Front Street. Let me talk to Speed. He wants to talk to you. Yes, Bob? This is just a hunch, but I've an idea that Dr. Satan might be planning a job on that drug company warehouse. Drive over there, I'll meet you, and we'll see what we can find out. Right, Bob. We'll be back, Lois. care of the watchman. and watch. I'll find the tongue ache. burning out the controls.
The robot itself can be easily repaired, but the control cell is ruined. And we've no time to make another cell. We must find some. I have set out to build an army of robots. Neither the copperhead nor anyone else can prevent me. I found out where the tongue eye comes from. It's the Acme Mine in Stanton County. But the district attorney has put it under heavy guard. We wouldn't have a chance getting away with any of it. Scott. Mr. Scott, are there any other sources of tangite? No. The Acme Mine is the only place where it is produced commercially. Is in the ore found anywhere else? There are some deposits in the Black Rock Canyon country, but it doesn't pay to work them. Thank you, Mr. Scott. We'll work them. We'll mine the ore and smelt it ourselves. Gort, get your men and go to Black Rock Canyon. Find out who owns those tangite claims. item. It's in the Canyon City News. We get exchange copies at the office. Tongue-eyed ore. I wonder if Dr. Satan is connected with the deal. I don't know. Canyon City. It's only a few hours' drive from here. I think I'll run down and have a talk with this Panaman Pete. He can tell us who he sold the property to. I'll go with you. Are you Panamint and Pete? Uh, that's what they call me. I want to talk to you. We'll just be a minute. Oh, there ain't no need to hurry. You know, it gets kind of lonesome around these parts, and, and I like to have company. <laughs> Won't you sit down? Thank you. I understand you recently sold a tongue-eyed mine. Uh, that's right, miss. Oh, I got a good price for it, too. We'd like to find out who bought it. I don't rightly know, miss. A fellow from a city company paid me the money, but, but he wouldn't tell me what company it was. Are they working the mine? Oh, yes, miss. They, they started work right away. Then we can probably get the information we want at the property. Could you tell us how to get there? Why, sure. It's back of the hills by Black Rock Junction. But I'll loan you my horses and you can ride out. Oh, that will be splendid. Now, I'll show you the trail. Ladies, Dr. Satan figured somebody would be nosing around. Come on. Where are you taking us? Why, to the place you were so anxious to find. The tongue I'd mine. And maybe to join your father later on. Get going.
Bob here? No, I'm waiting for him myself. He'll be back soon. What's the matter? I just found out that Dr. Satan is operating a tongue-eyed mine. What? Where? I don't know exactly, but it's somewhere near Black Rock Junction. Someone ought to get out there as soon as possible. You bet. I won't wait for Bob. I'll leave a note. He can follow as soon as he gets in. I'll get some men from the DA office and head out there right away. Martin, Capital City Star. These men are from the DA's office. We'd like to get some information. Glad to help, if I can. Do you know of a prospector named Panaman Pete? Don't believe I do. You see, I just got this job. Haven't had time to get acquainted. Have uh, any shipments of ore been coming through here lately? Yes, a few. Where from? Can't say for sure. You see, they come in from the hills on trucks. Is that one of the trucks? Yeah. They ought to know where the stuff is coming from. Are you running this outfit? Yeah. What kind of ore are you shipping? Oh, I don't know. I just cart the stuff. Where from? Say, what's all this mean to you? Just a little information we'd like to get to the DA's office. Well, suppose I don't want to talk. Then you'll have to come along with us. Oh, I'd be glad to oblige. Hey, Spike! Get gone!
don't have a chance to stop him now. You missed out on a lot of excitement. Yes, the men just told me about it. I'm sorry I wasn't able to get here in time to help. What happened to the truck? Cut away. Well, looks like Dr. Satan's one up on us with that load of tongue eye Yeah, a lot more he shipped through here. That madman's got to be stopped soon or we're late. Yeah, but how? He's certainly not going to send any more of the stuff through here, and we don't know where the mine is. Maybe we can find it. Well, there's nothing we can do out here, Wayne. We'll go back to the office and check on those smelters. Maybe we can run down the ore that way. Good idea. See you later. May I ask your phone? Sure. Scott speaking. Oh, yes, Bob. I see. But just before Panam and Pete was shot, he started to draw a map on the table in his shack. If that's still there, it might give you a clue to the location of the mine. Oh, that's swell, Lois. Thanks. We'll go out there right away. Goodbye. Lois says there's a part of a map out of Panam and Pete's that might lead us to the mine. Let's go. Much obliged. Gort, go ahead. Burns speaking. Two men just left here for Panam and Pete's. They found out there's some kind of a map on Pete's table. Who are they? One is a reporter named Martin. Don't know who the other is. Probably Bob Wayne. Okay, Burns. I'll take care of it. Joe! Red. Bob Wayne and his reporter friend are on their way to Panam and Pete's shack. But you can beat him to it through Black Canyon. Get him and bring him back here. Give him a hand. What is it, Gordon? Wayne and Martin are on their way to Panam and Pete's to try and locate the mine. You'll have to stop them. I sent out two men to get them and bring them back here. I figured that... Are you crazy? I don't want them near the mine. They've caused me enough trouble as it is. I can't give them another chance to interfere with the shipment of Tungite ore. You're in the country, there is no one to check on you. Take care of it. Yes, sir. Follow me. That must be the shack there. Here comes the car. Anybody in there? Wait until they get closer. It's awfully quiet. Yeah. There's someone around. Those two horses have been ridden hard lately. We better play it safe. I'll cover the front door. You go around the side and throw a shot through one of the windows. And we'll see what happens. Okay. Cover that side.
one door. We'll get them when the fire forces them out. You gotta get out of here, Red. This place will be a furnace in a couple of minutes. We're coming out! Throw your guns out first! Well, this is better than I expected. I've got an idea, Speed. You're gonna lead us right to the tongue eight, Mike. Get going. Well, they got him all right. Dr. Satan said not to let Wayne or Martin near the mine. You two take the one on the left and I'll take the one on the right. The other was loose to bring in the cops. We gotta get out of here in a hurry. Hallett, you stay out here and keep a lookout. We'll sack the rest of the ore and take it with us. Come on, I got a job for you. Help us load those sacks. carry this stuff without your help. Come on over here, Speed.
Well? The P&G warehouse just called. The shipment of ore has arrived. Right on schedule. Dr. Satan. The ore is at PNG warehouse. Have it picked up at once and smelt it down as quickly as possible. That'll be the last shipment now that the mine has been located. Yes, but that doesn't bother me. If I can avoid further interference while the ore is being smelted, I'll still have enough tangai to build all the robot control cells I need. No one think of looking for a smaller plant here. Push that ore through as fast as you can. We'll be back in an hour with the rest of it. We ought to get out of here by morning. Good. Come on. had escaped? Yes, he must have. When I got to the mine, everyone was gone. But I found this tag. It may be off one of the ore sacks. And Dr. Satan must be reducing the ore to tongue right here in Capital City. That's the way it looks, Pete. But where? Every smelting plant is being watched. But there are other plants that could break down the ore loss. Plants that are normally engaged in other types of work. Yeah, but it'd be a tough job searching all of them. That's where this tag comes in. The P&G is a warehouse and storage company. Dr. Satan may be using it as a blind. Now, if we can check on this man, Wilson, we may be able to find out where the rest of the ore is being taken. Good idea. Let's go. The warehouse should be just ahead. Here? Yeah? What can I do for you? We're trying to locate the party who's receiving these shipments. Are those sacks for the same party? Yeah. Should be picked up any time now. You know where they take that stuff? No, I don't. Mind if we wait around? It's okay with me. What's our next move? Jumping while they're loading? No. This is only a small shipment. It's more important to find out where the rest of the oil was taken. That way we may be able to find out to Satan. Right. Here comes our truck now. Come on. Quick, in there. We'll be out of sight. Load it up. Hiya. He came for our step. Oh, all right. I know him. He's one of Dr. Satan's men. Can I use your phone? Sure. In the office there. Thanks. I'll 
see what it is. trouble down at the station. I had to leave him. Anyone call you here? No, of course not. Well, let's get this stuff unloaded. Give me that sack, and you tell Satan the last load is here. Right. the old gas plant. Dr. Satan's using it to smelter out the tongue ice. Yes, I've got the men all locked up. Tell the DA to send help. All right. Hold it, Copperhead. 
Take him to the storehouse. Let the others out. Get the tongue eyed North back in the truck. I'll call Dr. Satan and tell him to expect a guest. He'll be glad to see you. Dr. Satan? I don't know. Where do they ship the tongue at? To the laboratory. Mr. Scott. Mr. Scott, the inventor? Is Mr. Scott still alive? Yes, he. Where is he? So Fallon talked, huh? Yes. Listen to this. Fallon is at Berlin Hospital. Authorities expect to gain further information from him upon his regaining consciousness. They'll get no further information from Fallon. I don't know. He may tell more. No, you're wrong. I'll see to it. My plans are too well laid. My army of mechanical men too nearly a reality to allow any man to interfere with it now. Mr. Scott, your friends may think they're about to find you. You're better be mistaken.
Hello? Mr. Wayne, Fallon is regaining consciousness. Good, I'll be right over. Notify the district attorney's office.
Bob Wayne calling W6XO. Bob Wayne calling W6XO. W6XO answering. What is it, Bob? Lois, I'm trailing Dr. Satan's men and the robot. They turned off Highway 33 about four miles out of town on a dirt road that's screened by a billboard. Get speed and the DA's men. Right, Bob. Successfully concludes that piece of business. Your friend will have no clue to your whereabouts now, Mr. Scott, so you can continue your work without fear of interruption. Satan, and put up your hands. Well, this is a surprise. What do you wish of me? You're going to take Mr. Scott and me safely out of this building. No, my friend, you're mistaken. I have other plans. control board to a safer place, Mr. Scott. I usually get the information I seek before the war closes. Unfortunately, you have no information I want. Stay here. Who's there? It's Bob Wayne. 
Is that you, Speed? Yeah, that's me. How do you open this? There's a release over behind the door. I'll find it. He got down there. I'll explain that later. Who was doing the shooting? We were. One of Dr. Satan's men, but he got away. Did he have any papers with him? No, but he was trying to open that safe. Well, let's have a look at it. I heard Dr. Satan sent him for some confidential records. Did you get my records? No, I couldn't. Speed Martin, the newspaper man, and two DA men jumped me. I lost the DA men in a secret passage. Where's Martin? Still in the main room, trying to open the safe. I'm gonna have to break it open. With what? I'll have to get something to use as a pry bar. and get those papers. A secret passage. Come on. Somebody's coming. See where this tunnel leads. Okay. It's Bob Wayne. The robot will take care of him. Me at headquarters. Joe, Joe, come on. We gotta get out of here. Bob! 
Wow! Look, the robot short-circuited in the water. Well, we didn't get Dr. Satan, but we got the robot. Get some ropes and get it out of there, then meet us up in the main room. I want to have a look at that safe. Letters from agents of Dr. Satan in 20 different cities. No wonder he was anxious to get these records. Take a look at this. Professor Williams. Well, that's the scientist the district attorney sent for to work out a method to offset Dr. Satan's remote control cell. And Dr. Satan knows about it and is out to get him. When is he expected to arrive? The plane's coming in from Chicago tonight. Get in touch with the airport and have him contact the plane. Yes. Take all this to headquarters. Come on, Steve. This is Perry, district attorney's office. Get me Central Airport, quick. Flight 7, just past Ball Mountain Beacon, on schedule. Flying at 3,000, airspeed 170, visibility 4. Flight 7 off. Calling Flight 7. Chicago to Capital City, calling Flight 7. Come in, Flight 7. Flight 7. Can you hear me, Flight 7? Flight 7, listen. There's a robot control in your plane. Do you hear? A robot control in your plane. Get Professor Williams to disconnect it. Come in, Flight 7. The airport knows you have a remote control cell in the plane. That won't help the plane. My agent Z-10 saw to it that the receiving set is out of commission. No one can stop me from bringing down that plane where my men are waiting. Professor Williams will be my prisoner, unable to interfere with my plans. be flying that plane by remote control. Quick, try your auxiliary controls. You must have snapped a control cable. Well, that's impossible. Stabilizer is still normal and we're still in level flight. Contact Central Airport to Capital City. There's something mighty funny about this. Flight 7 calling Central Airport. Emergency. Flight 7 calling Central Airport. Come in, Central Airport. Come in, Central Airport. Central Airport calling Flight 7. I hear you, Flight 7. Listen to me. Flight 7 calling Central Airport. A receiving set is out. Let's try it again. Flight 7 calling Central Airport. Flight 7 calling Central Airport. Flying out of control. Come in, Central Airport. Central Airport calling Flight 7. Can you hear me, Flight 7? You've got a robot control in your plane. Have Professor Williams disconnected. Flight 7, can you hear me? Flight 7 calling Central Airport. Come in, Central Airport. The plane's receiving set is out of commission. Get to my hangar. Stop on it.
what's that other plane doing there? Look, he's blinking his taillight. He's using Morse code. Dr. Satan, remote, control, cell, your plane, Professor Williams. Get Professor Williams, he's one of our passengers. My controls have been cut off, Professor. That plane ahead is warning us about a remote control cell. He keeps repeating, Dr. Satan, Professor Williams. He ultimately means that Dr. Satan has installed his remote control cell in this plane. We must find it at once. They shall not escape me. I'll crash the transport. Professor Williams. Not so good. You'll need more than first aid. All right, contact Ross. Flight 7 calling Central Airport. Flight 7 calling Central Airport. Central Airport to Flight 7. Come in, Flight 7. Flight 7, reporting position, on schedule. Professor Williams badly burned about face and head. Arranged for medical care on arrival. Okay, Steve. I don't understand. You will very soon. Come. We must work quickly. Well, hello, Steve. Hi, Ross. Boy, what a time you must have had. I wouldn't want to go through a night like this again. I still don't know what happened. Well, there was one of Dr. Satan's remote control cells hidden in the plane. He tried to crash us into Superstition Mountains, but Professor Williams ripped out the control. That's how he got burnt. Well, how is he now? Oh, he's all right. The ambulance just got him. Ambulance? Well, I called Doc Brown. He hasn't any ambulance. Well, that's funny. Well, maybe the DA sent one. I don't think so. He didn't say anything about it. Just said he was sending a couple of his men over. Well, I better check up on this. Martin, Capital City Star. I'd like to go along and get a statement from the professor as soon as he's able to talk. But it's... Well, it's against the regulations, but I guess it'll be all right. Hey! Hey, wait a minute! the district attorney's office? Yes. Well, something strange just happened. An ambulance picked up Professor Williams and drove him away. And the ambulance wasn't sent for. Which way did they go? They headed for South Boulevard. We'll pick up that ambulance. Say, this ain't 
the way to the hospital. Bright boy. You learn fast. There's a DA car right behind us. Neat job of bandaging, Professor Williams. Turn around. Hey, how about this reporter? Get out, you. What's he doing here? He insisted on coming along. Take him with you. I'll call you later. Yes, sir. Yes, quite. We're from the district attorney's office. We'd better get you to a doctor. No, it won't be necessary. I'm not badly hurt. But your burns. Oh, they're superficial. Besides, I I'm anxious to get to Loman Park. There is work to do. You drive the ambulance to the office. I'll take the professor to Loman Park. Right. attorney sent it here, Professor Williams. He thought you could work to better advantage here in Father's laboratory. Quite thoughtful of him, Miss Scott. Hello, Bob. I want you to meet Professor Williams. Professor Williams, this is Bob Wayne. How do you do? How do you do? It was Bob who flew the plane that warned your pilot. If it hadn't been for him, you'd all be dead. Killed by Dr. Satan. Indeed. Mr. Wayne, I'm very happy to know you. Your gallant actions shall not go unrewarded, I assure you. I was happy to have been of service. Have you examined the robot? Only in a general way. A most ingenious mechanism. Without this model, it'll take Dr. Satan months to build more robots. Meanwhile, we hope to run him down. Very logical procedure. But, uh, have you no clues to his whereabouts? A friend of ours, Speed Martin, was riding in the ambulance that spirited you away, Professor Williams. Did you know that? There were several men up front. Well, he must have been one of them. Uh, he's Dr. Satan's prisoner now. But he left his camera in the front seat of that ambulance, and the film was exposed. What did he show? I don't know yet. Police Chief Rand is having it developed and promised to phone and let me know. I see. That must be him now. Hello? Hello, Bob. Yes, we found something. A picture of a car and a license plate, but it's a phony. The car had been stolen, and the address given was a deserted hotel at Oyster Cove. Thanks, Chief. Any clues? Well, it looks like a dead end. They traced the license number to a hotel at Oyster Cove, but the place was deserted. Don't you think the place might be worth looking over, Bob? It 
Sounds like an ideal spot to hide prisoners. That's a good idea. I'll run down there and take a look around. I'll be back later. Good luck, Bob. May I use your telephone, Miss Scott? Why, surely, Professor. Hello? This is Professor Williams. Professor Williams? Yes, Williams. Oh, I get it. Yes, we just got here. I want to make reservations for a friend of mine. Uh, Mr. Lewis is coming to visit you. So please arrange to take care of him properly. I understand. We'll take care of him, all right. Sure glad to see you. Who's this? This is Professor Williams. Professor Williams? Well, I just left him at Loman Park. The man's an imposter. I'm Professor Williams. Dr. Satan got in the ambulance. Dr. Satan got in the ambulance. Well, it must be him posing as the professor. We've got to get out there.
Dr. Warren Lois. Dr. Satan's at Loman Park, posing as Professor Williams. There's a phone down the road away. Good. I'll get the car. There. The robot is in working condition again. Isn't that dangerous, Professor Williams? The control board is in Dr. Satan's hands. There is some danger, but it must be risked. Unless the robo is intact, I cannot study it. Only by becoming familiar with its workings can I hope to find a means of counter control. Well, I guess you're right, Professor. But there is no reason to subject you or your family to danger. The district attorney has arranged for a place for me to work downtown. I'll telephone him and have the robo take it down there. As you wish. I confess I'll feel easier when that thing is out of here. I don't blame you. Hello. Uh, this is Professor Williams at Loman Park. I'm ready to have the robot taken to your laboratory. Okay, Dr. Satan, I'll get the truck started right away. Good. It'll be ready by the time you get here. as soon as possible. Very well, I'll be glad to. Thank you for calling. The man will finish creating the robot when they call for it, Miss Scott, and I thank you for your kindness. Well, you're not leaving. Yes, I must get busy at once. Well, I thought you'd want to see some of Father's other inventions. Here's a poisonous gas he was working on. It's very dangerous. Because of its acid reaction, it has to be kept in a lead container. It must be a very formidable weapon. It would be, if Father had been able to perfect it. But it's not practical yet. To be used in quantities, it would have to be highly compressed, which heats it too much. At a temperature of 400 degrees, it disintegrates and becomes harmless. Very interesting, but I'm afraid I must go now. Oh, there's one more thing you must see. Father had so many interesting projects. I'm deeply sorry about your father, Miss Scott, and I hope he's returned to you unharmed. Thank you. With your help, he may be. What do you mean? This. Dr. Satan. What have you done with my father, Dr. Satan? He's alive and well. But don't you think... Stay where you are. Yes? The cop ahead in that reporter got away. They know it's Dr. Satan at Longman Park. They're on their way there now. arrangement. Change my freedom for your father's life. Do you think I trust your promises? Sit down. Dr. Satan, until help comes. Even if I have to... Sorry to disappoint you, Miss Scott, but my plans will not allow me to stay here longer. Sit down.
hope you'll not be too uncomfortable, Miss Scott. sent us here to pick up a robot for Professor Williams. I'll see about it. Wait here, please. Sure. After that, he left and took the robot with him. A truck is outside to pick up the robot. What? A truck is outside. The men say they're from the district attorney. They're Dr. Satan's men. Wait a minute. They don't know what's happened here. They'll take that box straight to Dr. Satan. I'm going in that box. You're crazy. Dr. Satan will open the box just as soon I know, soon as... but he won't expect to find me in there. I'll be able to get the drop on him and hold him until you get out there. How will I find the place? Follow the truck. Now tell him to come and get the box. All right, go ahead. See where Doc Satan wants this unloaded.
So you went to Lumen Park? Sure, we went there and got the box. It's a wonder you weren't arrested. I brought the robot. The box is empty. It ain't empty, it's too heavy. God, give him a hand. Give us a hand. Find out what's in it. Now wait. There's something wrong here. They knew you were my man. Why did they let you get away with the box? Uh, I think I understand. without even opening it. But I... They're going to burn the box and the copperhead is in it. Take it up to 600. and burned it. How do you know this? Dr. Satan telephoned. He hung up before I could... Yes, this is Lois Scott. This is the Copperhead. It's the Copperhead. He's alive. Dr. Satan told us he burned the box and we thought you were in it. No, I wasn't in that box. The truck stopped outside an isolated house and I... Wait here. I'll see where Dr. Satan wants this unloaded. Right now, I'm where I can watch the house. It's located a half a mile south of the car barns on Shore Drive. Get the district attorney's men to come out here at once. Right. I've got to call the district attorney's office, Speed, and get some help. Nothing can stand in your way now, Dr. Satan. Just one thing. It's possible that the truck the box came in may have been trailed. 
Th then we'd better clear out. And the country, Stoner. I ask nothing better than to have my enemies step inside these walls. And what about Scott? I have no further use for Mr. Scott now that I possess the secret of his remote control cell. But if you released him, he could always work against you. I don't intend to release him. Take care of it. Go to headquarters and take care of Scott. Leave it that, Stoner. Let's go. We want Scott. Dr. Satan's orders. What do you want now? You. The effect of Dr. Satan's drugs have worn off. I'm not obeying any more of his orders. You're going to obey his last order. Turn around. Satan returns. He won't return. He's at the Shore Road place. The DA's men are cleaning it out now. The Shore Road place? They'll never take him there. That house is a death trap. Dr. Satan has fiendish devices at every turn. Unless those entry know about them, they're in deadly danger. Do you know how to avoid those traps? Yes. Well, we've got to get out there right away. are driving up. I thought the copperhead was to be here. He said he would. But we can't waste any time waiting. Burns, you take the east side. Adams, you and your men cover the rear. Come on. Perfect, perfect. Just as I would have planned it.
them all. Come. The honors of your party are in the hands of my men. You four are worthy of my special attention. You all interfered with me in the past. None of you shall ever do so again. My robot will give each of you a last deadly embrace. Stoner, you and God go in the control room. I'll deal with you first, Miss Scott. Rather interesting, isn't it? To think that your inventive father made all this possible with his remote control cell. We must get to the control room without being seen. Where is it? Upstairs. Walk lightly. Don't touch the hand railing. Everything is wired. I wish you all a pleasant journey. Hold it, Dr. Satan. Stoner, cut! Here we go. The girl will be first. the uh, copperhead. I found him prowling about, so I took him by surprise. Give me a hand. We'll put him in with the others. Let the rover take care of him. We've got to get to that robot. The only way we can stop that is by the control room. Girl can wait. No! No! Stoner! 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 Feeling all right now, Lois? Yes, Father. It's wonderful to know that you're safe and that Dr. Satan... Dr. Satan and his robots won't bother you anymore. The district attorney's men have the rest of the gang rounded up. What a story. What a story. Except for one thing. Who's the copperhead? This belong to you, Bob? You were the copperhead. Oh, sure. I, I knew it all the time. 
You see, Lois, my father was the original Copperhead years ago. He too fought crime and injustice, only to be condemned by the unthinking as a lawbreaker. Well, I've done my best to clear his name. When you write your part of the story, Lois, will you explain the whole truth about my father? Leave it to me, Bob. Thank you.